Hey, it's Darren from the Industrial Revolution. Welcome back. Uh, this is part three of our seven part video course on understanding early steam power and atmospheric engines. If you're just joining, uh, you can start back at the beginning. There should be a link showing up up here on the screen. Uh, if it's not, down in the description, I have a link that you can jump back to the beginning if you want to. Uh, anyway, uh, for those who are continuing along on, on this uh, journey with me, uh, as I mentioned, this is part three of our seven part course. Uh, we just took a look at this uh, 1712 Newcomen engine, the world's oldest surviving intact steam engine. Uh, so this wasn't Newcomen's first. His first, as I mentioned, the, the cylinder was mounted directly on top of the boiler. They were a little bit smaller and you had to manually control everything. You had to manually operate those levers. Uh, for every single cycle of the engine. So Nukeman made some big changes. One thing that didn't change is the look of the beam engine. Uh, these stayed pretty much the same uh, throughout the first century of steam power. And actually, if you look at newer steam engines, they have quite a few of them here in the museum. Uh, they actually stayed pretty much the same for the next century as well. Uh, one big thing that did change, though, is the plug tree. Uh, as I mentioned, originally, uh, these valve levers, they would have operated manually with every single uh, stroke of the piston. Well, Newcomen added this plug tree. It's this pole that goes up and down and trips the levers at just the right time. One interesting thing is that if you look closely, you'll see you can actually adjust where those pegs are installed in the plug tree. And the reason for that is you can adjust the timing of exactly when and how far these valves open. And if adjust the timing sounds a little familiar to you, if you've worked on old cars, for example, uh, we're still kind of using these plug trees. Uh, we've moved it from the linear part of the engine over to the rotary part of the engine and nowadays it's called a camshaft. So Newcomen engines made a lot of money for mines or really saved a lot of money for mines by replacing huge amounts of, of horses or human labor uh, with one single engine. Uh, mines were able to go far deeper than ever before and at far lower cost. So really, these were absolutely perfect, kind of until they weren't. And that's where this other engine comes into play here. These engines are huge mechanical devices and they did have to get repaired. And decades after the Newcomen engine was introduced, they were very popular. They were actually being called common engines at the time. They started off being called fire engines, but by the time James Watt came along, they were called common engines. They had to be repaired at times. And James Watt was called in to do just that. And he realized that new common engines really had two problems, and he knew how to fix it. So both problems with new common engines come down to this cylinder here. And the first problem is, if this cylinder gets too hot, when you uh, spray the water jet into it to condense the water down, the water will condense, touch the walls of the cylinder and flash back into steam. And you don't get as much compression and you lose power. And you can actually lose so much power that the engine actually stops completely. And you just have to shut it down, wait for things to cool down, and then start it up again. The other problem you could run into is this starts out cold, but if you're putting enough water into it, uh, it can actually stay cold. As you put steam into this, it starts to contract and you get less power from it. You have to put more steam into it. And doing that costs you more money, of course. This is where James Watt invented the external condenser and that's really what made his name. So before we jump into the next video, uh, there is an error in the video. I've since updated it with a, a correction video, uh, but I misidentified the condensing cylinder. Uh, this is actually the condensing cylinder here on the left, and 
On the right is a vacuum pump, a little air pump, and we'll talk more about that when we come back. Uh, this is a slightly more advanced design than his original, uh, and again, we'll talk more about that when we come back. So before we go on, uh, I just want to remind you, uh, if you have any questions, comments along the way, be sure to ask those down in the comments. Uh, I love reading your comments. I usually answer them pretty quickly. Uh, also, uh, please do like this video and all the videos in the series. Uh, that really helps YouTube to send more people to the channel, send more people to this course. So now let's go ahead and jump into our next video to take a look at this 1796 James Watt canal pump. Uh, this was built 84 years after Newcomen built the pump that we just looked at. Uh, it looks almost exactly the same. Uh, but remember, this is 84, 84 years later, and realistically, one total change from the Newcomen pump. I'll see you when we get back.